To recap, in the previous video we learned that Reaver could be used to perform a side channel attack, which would leverage a vulnerability in the Wi-Fi protected setup, the WPS, of certain routers. Those certain routers obviously being those that support WPS. If they do, great. Your attack will succeed within approximately three hours to two days, depending on signal strength. Now, you may not have realized this yet, but there's actually some risk involved in performing this attack. And that risk is the fact that it's an active attack. Active in this context being that you're sitting on the network throwing packets at it. If somebody has a well-configured router's firewall, or if they're just very good at networking in general and monitoring what's going on, they're going to realize there's something suspicious going on. And that's self-explanatory. That's not good for you. So what is an alternative? Well, an alternative would be to do a passive attack. Okay, how do you perform a passive attack? Well, a passive attack is basically you perform the attack on your own computer. You stay off of the network. Obviously, you're going to need to acquire some materials beforehand. And so I'm going to tell you what those materials are and step through that. And then I'll show you your possible attack vectors. So let's do that first. So we're already in monitor mode and everything else. So what do we want to get? Well, we're going to want to use AeroDump to collect some frames slash packets. So let's go ahead and run that. Much like before, this packet capture is collecting information on all the routers, which is what we're interested in. Now this time, I'm actually connected to a router. As you can see down here, there's just no internet connection. Don't mind that. Um, and that's the one we want to crack. Now the name of my router is Belkin 54G. So let's go ahead and stop this. Do we see Belkin 54G in here anywhere? No, well, we see Belkin C72, but that's what we used in the last attack. It's not the same router. There is this odd thing here, a length of nine characters, which happens to be the number of characters in Belkin 54G. Suspicious. Well, that's going to end up being it. What you see here, and the reason why it's not showing, is because I set the router to non-discoverable mode. And I only did this for the purpose of showing you that non-discoverable is hardly a security measure, if at all. Because uh, it just honestly doesn't mean anything at the end of the day. But anyway, so we found the router here. This is the MAC address. We're going to be using that. And now we want to actually get a capture file where we're going to store these frames that we're collecting. So, we're going to use AeroDump again. And we're going to put in the MAC address. We're going to run it on channel 3 because that's what it's using. And we're going to read to a file pwned. That'll be the name of the file. And again, we're running on mod 0. So okay, here we go. We got the packet capture going. It's monitoring it. Not too much data going on over here though. It's because even though I'm logged in, I'm not doing anything with it. And oh, I guess there's some information going back and forth. And aha, there you go. Belkin 54G. It already figured it out. So yeah, there's some background information going on, and then it just figures it out. Pretty sad. In case you were curious, if you were looking on a Windows 7 machine. Obviously, you can see the Belkin 54G because I'm logged into it. But otherwise, you'd have to click on Other Network. So that's how you know there's non-discoverable networks around. So, not great security. So, okay, we're, pack we're capturing some of these frames and the packets within them, but we can't de-authenticate them. Well, I'm not going to cover WEP because that's old, and this is WPA anyway. So, what does WPA do for authentication? Well, it's complicated, but they use a four-way handshake. And right now we're not capturing that four-way handshake because no one's authenticating themselves to the router right now. Now, if uh, somebody else was logged into this router as opposed to me, we have no reason of thinking that they're going to log off and log on anytime soon. We could sit around for hours and wait for it and eventually we'll get it. But maybe we're impatient. So instead, here's what we're going to do. We can open up another terminal. We'll leave that one running. And we're going to use the following. Air replay ng 
the dash a, this is for the MAC address, same one, dash zero, I'll explain that in a second, one, mon zero. Seems we've had a little bit of trouble. Let's try this with zero. Give it a few seconds, and there we go. Suddenly, we have a WPA handshake up here. Well, that was extraordinarily easy now, wasn't it? Why were we able to get that so easily? Well, Air Replay is a injection program, uh, slash replay program. So we're able to make particular packets to throw in. Now, I'm not going to go through all the details, but if you were to look up the man page on Air Replay really quickly, you would notice that there are some preset, pre-made uh, attacks in here that you can use. We use dash zero, which is for uh, deauthenticate. So when we issue the deauthenticate command, well, what's the client going to do? Well, assuming it's in his favorites, he's just going to re-authenticate, which is going to send the messages across, and so we captured them. Easy. Not an issue at all. Um, as for the one at the end that we tried here, that means you only use the attack once. Uh, you don't keep resending it. Uh, by using zero, as I did the second time, we continuously kept sending those packets to de-authenticate. Now, notice by the fact that I kept on doing that, if this was somebody else, that would be a denial of service attack that we would have just done, because we would have kept on knocking them off the router, <laughs> you know, two, three times a second. They would never be able to do anything. But that's not the point of this. So, okay, we got the packets. Great. What are we going to do with it now? Uh, well, we are going to do one of three things. One, we could do a brute force attack, which is basically guessing each of the characters. Yeah, you might get it in a day, but realistically it's probably going to take about a lifetime to get that password. You could do a statistical attack, which leverages cryptanalysis and some other fancy techniques. Yeah, you could get it in a day, but realistically it's probably going to take a lifetime. Obviously it depends on the length of the person's password. So instead, what are we going to do? We're going to do a dictionary attack. Now, if you don't know what a dictionary attack, it's pretty much what it sounds like. You basically have a text file that goes on and on and on and on with a bunch of common passwords. You can basically just take it from a dictionary. That's where it started. Um, if you Google around for dictionary lists, for dictionary attacks, you can find them of lengths of about 10 million passcodes. Maybe more. Um, Backtrack comes equipped with about 2,300 by default just so you can test it out. So that's what we're going to do real fast. So I'm going to show you that real quick by opening the file manager. It's called Dolphin in uh, Backtrack. And this file is located in Pentest. Uh, wireless. Aircrack NG. Test. Password list. And here you see some of these common passwords. Now the actual password for my router, I have already gone ahead and thrown in here so we could find it, just for the purpose of demonstration. So okay, we got all this. That's great. If we do all this, we notice here we have the pwned, and here's the capture file. Great. So now, let's go ahead and crack it. Aircrack NG. Pwned. 01.cap dash w, this is where we're getting the file from the dictionary pen test wireless aircrack ng slash test slash password dot list boom password it's over 9000 it was pretty much that simple 216 keys didn't even take a whole second and so that's how you can perform a dictionary attack if you if you can't do a WPS attack. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I hope you learned a lot from it. Thanks for watching.